It's Flux Friday, the best update show in the hobby, brought to you and hosted by Dr. Flux. So it's Friday. I'm Dr. Flux. Here's another episode of Flux Friday. We have some really interesting stuff to talk about today, starting with a product that was sent in from Frontline Foam. This right here is the Hummingbird 2.0. It is the latest and greatest Hummingbird. Now, when the first blaster came out, I was a huge fan because of its futuristic kind of Chris Vector look. I, I absolutely love it. Secondly, it's because it has a solenoid in here. So the old Hummingbird and the new Hummingbird operate off of a solenoid, which is really cool. The old one was just a semi-auto flywheeler. So we got a couple flywheels up here. It's powered off a 3S LiPo, and then we have a solenoid in the back, which pushes the darts through the flywheels. Pretty simple design. Now the Hummingbird family is all very super easy to work on. They use these pens to get access to the battery compartment here which is a really nice design. But one thing that makes this Hummingbird stand out from the other version is it has full auto. So through some wizardry of electrical engineering or mechanical engineering, we have a solenoid that is able to fire full auto without the need of any kind of controller, whether that be an Arduino or some type of programmable little microcontroller. There's not none of that in here. It's just basically done via a circuit and a mechanism. So in that regard, it's really amazing. I'll go ahead and display some chronograph numbers here. Now keep in mind this blaster is running off three Yes, lipo. In addition, I did get a note from Frontline Foam saying they are working on a kind of a, a select fire version because you can actually switch this over to a semi-auto and then full auto. Keep in mind that semi-auto and full auto, no burst fire. Now the one that was sent in here just has a switch on the inside. I have to figure out a way to integrate it out onto the shell or there'll probably be a replacement part in which I could put that switch on it. Now from testing this blaster at about 30 feet for a flywheeler, I think this thing is very accurate and I can't wait to play with this thing in a future game. The last thing to talk about the Hummingbird is just the rate of fire. This thing just flies through magazines. Super big fan of this design. Next on the agenda is some exciting news. Here at Flux Labs, we have been cordially invited to go back down to Texas for another blaster battle in August. Now this is amazing because this is AT&T Stadium. This is the home of the Dallas Cowboys and I'll be there as a VIP, which is amazing. This year I will be bringing my good friend Luchathor down there, so hopefully we'll have a great time. And you might be asking, is Dr. Flux going to do a big crazy build or some type of armor or something? Of course, yes. I have this new Halo armor that I've been working on and along with the armor, we're going to bring this flamethrower. And I call it a flamethrower because it's just super high capacity. It has these big old tanks on the side of it and it just spews rival rounds. Overall, this thing can hold over 3,200 rounds, which is quite the achievement. Now it does this by utilizing a 3D printed solid battle pack tank and a God Hopper. What a devastating combination. The power system runs off of an Outer Darts Proton Pack and the core blaster is a Prometheus. Everything else is just cosmetic mods. Now, if you plan on being at this blaster battle in August down in Texas, come look for me and say hi. Now last week we announced some new X-Shot blasters and unfortunately I forgot one so we're going to talk about it today. This is another blaster from the X-Shot skins line and they're calling it the Lock Blaster. What does this even mean? All I know is that at first glance this lever action revolver looking thing with a super swept back pistol grip looks great. Now on X-Shot's Instagram post they state the following. Scan the QR code on the blaster to find six unique codes. Put the combination in the blaster and click a button on the side to unlock then prime and fire. Now I'm gonna be fully honest, I've never even really thought of a blaster that locks itself. I mean, it's a cool concept, but I immediately started to think about game modes that maybe could support this. Let me know in the comment section, what would be a cool game to play with this? Here's one that I was thinking of. Basically, you scatter out all these blasters across the field, you know, just a bunch of these locked blasters, and the game mode is maybe, say, melee and throwables only, and if you get tagged by a throwable or a melee, you're just, you know, you have to go to respawn, but once people start getting the blasters and finding the unlock codes that are scattered across the battlefield and you get tagged by one of those, then maybe you're out, you know, which gives like the lock blaster kind of like more power for the game mode. I don't know, just an idea, but let me know what you think. Me personally, I can't wait to get my hands on this. I just hope I can one-handed, you know, prime this blaster with the lever action easily and maybe run it with a hammer shot because I think that would be a super cool loadout. So we have a rather important topic to discuss today. So this is a new CPSC regulation affecting many of the tagging sports. 
and that includes paintball, airsoft, nerf, possibly even laser tag, pretty much anything that has a blaster type of looking toy. Now we have an amazing piece of work here put together by the Provisional Nerf News Network. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this video because they did a great job at putting this all together, kind of dispelling any rumors and defining what actually the regulation is and does and providing a little bit of historical background as to why are we faced with this in this day and age. I feel they did a great job at laying all this out so people can understand what's going on. All right, now for the part of the show where I respond to some of the highest rated comments from last week's episode. First up is from Not Enough Nerf. You know, I'm on board with the traditional length option. I love the hype on the video and the pew pew is incredible looking. I think that the new firmware with the pre-spool is ingenious for brushless, which are known for their slower nanosecond startup when compared to standard copper wound motors. Excited for the future of the hobby? Let's go. Thank you Not Enough Nerf for your comment. And yeah, I'm just super stoked to finally get a Pew Pew. I'm also on board with the long darts. I think they're gonna be around for a long time and they're a very you know, important part of the hobby. So seeing blasters that release with compatibility with both, I think is important. I would note though, I would like to see Exha offering a full short dart blaster, but I believe that the first pro blasters that they launch, it's fine that they're short darts and long darts compatible. Next is a comment from Blender Vendor. I think the X-Shot doing short darts and long dart compatible mag is a great move because if you think about it, the people who will be buying this will probably be people who f are fairly new to the hobby or people that aren't sure about pro nerf. And I agree. I think this is a great kind of a gateway or a way to join the hobby. It's a uh, very affordable. It's gonna get in the hands of a lot of people. And also X-Shot is not even based in the US. so. European consumers and other people are gonna get their hands on very good performance-based blasters, which is a little bit harder for some areas of the world. Oh, and there's more. I hope they never move away from long darts at all. It might help get more people into the hobby. And yeah, like I said before, I don't think long darts are going anywhere. They are here to stay. We also have another comment, our last comment from Bullet Attack. At this rate, X-Shot is going to overtake Nerf. Well, <laughs> I had to chuckle at that one because Hasbro is actually a Fortune 500 company. It is massive. And companies like X-Shot, Dart Zone, Busby, you know, they're, they're actually uh, very, very small on the grand scheme of things. So now as far as the hobby is concerned and what we see, I'd say definitely. Like we, uh, Nerf definitely does not show us much love, whereas companies like X-Shot or Dart Zone or even Busby show the community a lot more love, which is nice. But as far as, you know, whether or not, you know, Nerf sales are gonna tank and, and cause Hasbro to uh, be overtaken by a company like X-Shot. Yeah, I just have a hard time seeing that. Well, I wanna thank you for watching today's Flux Friday. If you like what you see here, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. As always, I'm Dr. Flux. Be safe and happy foam flinging.